okay, you're going to go through a common scripture that non-dispensationalist heretics like to twist to say that it's been by faith alone in Jesus Christ from Genesis to Revelation. So Adam and Eve were basically put in their faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ thousands of years before Jesus Christ died on the cross. It's um, heretical, foolish nonsense. And it's been debunked in past videos. But here's the common scripture you love running to. This is a bunch of scriptures they like to twist to say that basically saints in the Old Testament and people in the time of Jacob's trouble can be, are basically saved by faith, which is kind of a problem because what happens if someone takes the mark? But And they can never answer that. And here's kind of the real thing of, of has it been by faith alone or that kind of stuff. Here's the real reason why I'm so big on against this non-dispensational heresy is these non-dispensational heresies this dispensational heretics, almost a tongue twister there, these non-dispensational heretics want to get people thinking in the time of Jacob's trouble that they have eternal security, that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit, so what? Then you can take the mark. And of course, they always like to say, well, no true Christian would take the mark. And here's how you stump them on that. Basically, here's a question to all you non-dispensational heretics out there who say that no true Christian could take the mark. Here's how you can get stumped. Ask them, just simply ask them, what happens if a true, a true Christian in this time period does take the mark anyway? What happens if they know it's the mark and they take it anyway? Are they still saved? They can never answer that. Because Revelation 14, 9 through 11 is crystal clear that anyone who takes the mark is damned. They go to hell. There's no exceptions. Any man, not just unsaved people. So if a true Christian knows it's the mark and willingly, willingly takes it anyway, are they still saved? So if you're a non-dispensational, answer that one, please. They can't. They can never answer that because it debunks their heretical system. Because essentially what they're saying is that you can go into that time period and basically take the mark and you're still saved. You still have eternal security, which is ridiculous. But here's a scripture they love to twist and totally uh, just, just wreck and, and pervert to say that it's been by faith alone in every dispensation. Galatians chapter 2 verse number 16. Here's the one they always love to run to. It says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now say, so see, the works of the law cannot justify you. Okay, you got a couple problems there. By the faith of Jesus Christ, um, Jesus Christ wasn't being preached in the Old Testament. So this was applicable back in the Old Testament, because they tried to say this was applicable throughout the entire Bible. Okay, where are the Old Testament prophets saying, I believe in Jesus? Where are people in the Old Testament saying, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? You won't find it. This is, now this verse is true, obviously, for today. It's true for today, but it's not true back in the Old Testament. Because again, where were they putting their faith in Jesus Christ in the Old Testament? It's not. If it was true back in the Old Testament, it would cause a, a contradiction in Scripture because it would contradict Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 and 21, Ezekiel 18, 20 to 27, and Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 8 to 9, and many, many other Scriptures too, which prove that there was an element of works that were involved. Ezekiel 18 is the best one. I had a kind of a back and forth with a non-dispensationalist heretic who tried to say that, you know, trying to say I'm a heretic because I said that Ezekiel 18 is basically disproves their non-dispensational heresy. And he tried to, I mean, these non-dispensational heretics, they always love to just twist and contort the scriptures and just always ex try to like twist it to explain it away. Instead of just reading the verse as it stands, they always have to twist it to try to explain it away when it contradicts their system. They can never just read it as it stands. So some stuff going on in the background. But yeah, so he's, still, he's saying he's talking about imputed righteousness, you know, ridiculous nutty nonsense. Uh, if you actually read Ezekiel 18, it talk, it's talking about them having to turn from wickedness to save their soul. And, and if they turn back to wickedness and die in that wickedness, they basically go to hell. It says they'll die in their sin. So it's ridiculous, uh, foolish. They can never answer that. They have to keep twisting it. But again, you got a problem there because by the faith of Jesus Christ, uh, where they weren't putting their faith in Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And a good way to respond to that is Galatians 2.21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now, is this true for today? Absolutely. But was this true back in the Old Testament? Uh, no, because Jesus Christ hadn't died yet. How can Christ be dead in vain if he hasn't even died yet? Ridiculous nonsense. So, for those, for those non-dispensational heretics who try to say that this applies back in the Old Testament, just ask them, okay, where does it say Christ died in the Old Testament? I mean, there were prophecies about it, but where were they preaching that for salvation? Because you actually have these non-dispensational heretics who say that they're putting their faith in Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, which is ridiculous. 
Uh, there's not one verse of them preaching a death, burial, and resurrection for salvation in the Old Testament. But I did not frustrate the grace of God. So if Christ is dead in vain back in the Old Testament, but he hadn't even died yet, you know, what? It doesn't make any sense. So don't be deceived by these non-dispensational heretics. It is a satanic heritage. It's very, very wicked, this non-dispensational thing. Uh, it's a perversion of scripture. It comes from the Catholic Church. They love the lie and say, oh, the Jesuit created, you know, pre-trib rapture and that kind of stuff. No, it was actually the Catholics that started non-dispensationalism. Non-dispensationalism is totally Roman Catholic. It is a Catholic heresy. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren out there. Goodbye. Thank you.